morning. It's Monday, June the 28th. Only a couple of days left in this month, and then we are halfway through the year. Um, so, had a good day yesterday. I hope you did too. It was uh, just a good edifying day. Um, and uh, just a great report we heard from Miss Vicki on the children, uh, the number that were saved this last week at Century Camp, and also those during Vacation Bible School. So the Lord's moving and the Lord's working, and at the same time, the enemy's working. Amen. He's always going to be working to try to subvert what God is doing, uh, but we cannot let him be victorious. Uh, this morning, I, um, I woke up actually all through the night. I just did not rest last night at all. So many things weighing on my heart and my mind, and I know uh, you deal with that sometimes as well, and it's it's kind of rare that I don't sleep because of concerns and different things on my mind, but boy, they sure were last night. And I was, I was reminded of, of what Paul writes in the book of Corinthians when he's writing to those believers there and just talking about the stress, anxiety, and his care for the churches, um, his concern for the churches. And I woke up this morning and just really feeling uh, anxious, feeling... Um, Boy, antsy about different things that I absolutely have no control over and, and question sometimes why do we worry about those things that we really don't have any control over and I was reminded of what Peter writes in first Peter chapter 5 verse 7 where he tells us to cast all our anxieties and our cares on him because he cares for you and Peter when he's writing that in first Peter he's making reference to Psalm 55 which is what we're going to look at this morning. We're going to step away from Ephesians because what I needed in my quiet time this morning was just some solace from the Lord, just um, some reminders that I can cast my cares on Him and know that He cares for me. And He cares more about the different situations that I'm concerned about than I do. And so to cast those on Him and, and uh, His care. And then there was an old song, old hymn. I'm not sure if it was a hymn or a gospel song that... It came out years ago, but I remember hearing my mama and my, my big mama sing it. My great-grandmother, Mother Coleman, would sing it, and uh, I think I've done it maybe one time on the, the devotion, but you'll be familiar with it, that his eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow Good day. 
a sparrow And I know he watches me Zion is on a sparrow And I know When hope within me dies, Zion is on the spot. He sets me free. Is I. I see because I am free who oh, is up is on the sparrow and I know And I know he watches me. Psalm 55. David is, uh, has been really betrayed by one of his friends. Happens to be the circumstance that's causing him anxiety and care and, and burden. We can apply the psalm to... To any area of our life, whatever may be causing us uh, to have anxieties or to be burdened over situations. And I think that's my greatest concern right now. I'm, I'm burdened over situations for other people, actually. Um, but I, I just found some, some principles in the psalm this morning that I just want to share with you. David, first, when he begins to to write this psalm, he, he's, he's really just expressing his despair where he is in the situation and he's expressing his heart to God. And I'm, I'm reminded in this that, that, that David was freely able to express his care and his concern to God. And you and I are free to express our concern, our whatever's burdened, uh, burdening in us. Sometimes we get in prayer, we, uh, we, we have the idea or seem to flower up our prayers a little bit to God, maybe in some way of, of impressing God or, Maybe in some way of saying, God, I'm, I'm just not going to really let you in on where I am. <laughs> That's kind of crazy because God, God sees the heart and God knows more of what's in our heart than we know what's in our heart. And so we can freely express to God those things that are, that are burdening our hearts. He begins by writing, give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not yourself from me or my plea for mercy. God, Please be attentive to my prayers. God, please don't hide yourself from me. And, you know, God doesn't hide himself from us, but it's it's a rhetorical phrase that David uses. God, I need to know that you're hearing what my prayer is. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint, and I moan. He's restless in his complaint, maybe like I was last night, not sleeping through the night, just restless in that. And... He says, because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble on me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. Now, again, he's expressing where he is in his, in his situation uh, today. 
but we can we can apply this to whatever might be the burden that we have. He says, my heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness. And here's what David's saying. David's saying, if I was able to, I would just, I would bolt and run. I would, I would fly away from this situation that I'm now facing. And don't you feel that way sometimes that you just like to run away, just to go away from all of it? But if we've ever tried that before, we realize that, that our troubles and our burdens are not very far from us because we're, we're, what they might be in the day circumstance, uh, given a few days, they're going to be there in the other place that we fly away to. And there's no place that we can run and hide from the cares of life. There's no place where we can ride, hunt, ride, run and hide from the situations in life. There's no place that we can run just to get away. Um, but where we need to run to is him. And that's what I was reminded of this morning, that that I can cast all my cares on him because he cares for me. He says, I would hurry and find a shelter from the raging wind and the tempest. In this next portion of the psalm, after David has expressed his heart, his burdens to the Lord, it, there's this sense of indignation because of what's taking place of injustice. Um, and, and it may be for us that, that, it's, that so we're angry just at the situation. We're angry at people that have caused the situation. We're, we're irritated at circumstances around that. And so he, he cries out. This particular cry is towards the one that is coming against me. But he cries out, destroy, O Lord, divide their tongues, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around on its walls, and, and sin and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. For it is not an enemy who taunts me. Then I could bear it. But it is not an adversary who deals insolently with me. Then I could hide from it. But it is you, O oh man, my equal, my companion, my family, my friend. We used to take sweet counsel together within God's house. We walked in the throng. Let death steal over them. Let them be. Uh, let them go down to Sheol alive, for evil is in their dwelling place and in their heart. Now, the particular friend that he's talking about is Absalom here. The very son uh, was pursuing him. And where they used to be close companions, they used to be close together, he's been violated and he's been... Um, He's been maligned by his friend. Maybe you've had that situation before and you know the feeling and you know the sense where you can't find within yourself any reason that this might have happened. But all of a sudden, this person who had once walked with you has turned on you. We probably have all had that kind of situation. And we shouldn't be surprised when that happens because we, we do have an adversary apart from that person, and the adversary is the devil himself. He's always seeking whom he may destroy, and he's always looking to break relationship and break fellowship, to wreak havoc, especially in the body of Christ and especially within our families. And so we have to recognize who the real enemy here is. Now, the last part of the psalm is where David cries out and says, God, Whatever situation there might that I might find myself in, God, I'm going to trust you. He says in verse 16, he says, but I call to God and the Lord will save me. There's a promise that when we call to God, he saves us or rescues or delivers us, maybe not from the situation, but from the angst and the burden and the care of that situation. When we are able to hurl or cast that care on him. He says, evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and I moan, and he hears my voice. No matter how many times we complain to the Lord, no matter how many times we express our moaning to the Lord, is what David's saying, morning, noon, evening. David's continually expressing, and every time he expresses his concern to God, he says, God hears me. Every time we express our concern to God, he hears us. I've heard people say, you know, we, we need to, we need to, 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 to 
to declare that burden to God and then leave it there. I wish it were that simple. I'm so thankful that God is a merciful and gracious God. And no matter how many times we bring our complaints to him, we bring our burdens, we bring our cares to him, he will always hear us. He will not turn us away. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage. For many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them. He who is enthroned from of old, because they do not change and do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smooth as butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Then he says in verse 22, and this is what Peter repeats in 1 Peter. He says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Now notice that he says this. He says, when we cast our burden on the Lord, he will sustain us. What that means is the burden may not go away. The situation may not change, but God will sustain us. God will give us strength in our spirit so that we might endure and walk through. But we're encouraged here to cast that care and that anxiety, that burden on the Lord. Because why? He cares for you. God cares about every single situation in your life and in my life. And while that situation may not change at that moment or that day, God will give us the strength to endure that situation. You see, that's the difference between when I knew when I didn't know the Lord and I know the Lord today. Is that is that God I recognize and realize God sometimes God has a timetable. And his timetable is not our timetable. And God's always working in every situation and every circumstance. And God is working to fulfill his plan. And God, in that, will sustain us and give us strength, give us patience. God will give us comfort. God will give us joy even in the midst of it so that he might sustain us, not to get us out of that situation, but to get us through that situation. That's what James is talking about in his letter when he says that, uh, that, that we, we face trials of various kinds, different kinds of trials. But in that, God will give us wisdom on how to deal with those and God will sustain us through those. You see, our natural tendency is always to want to flee. God says, no, I've, I've got a purpose in this trial. I've got a purpose in this because I'm working in you to conform you to the likeness of Christ, and I am bringing glory to myself by fulfilling my will through this situation and circumstance. Therefore, we can continually cast our cares on him, knowing that he hears and knowing that he will sustain us. Well, he concludes the psalm in verse 23 by saying this, But you, O God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction, Men of blood and treachery. In other words, God, you're the one that's going to handle this situation. I don't have to. God, it's beyond my ability, beyond my control to be able to, to, be able to take care of this situation. God, that's why I'm giving it to you because I know you will. And God, I know that you're the one that will do it. And then he concludes in, at the end of this, but I will trust in you. Today, God is calling us to trust in him in every circumstance, in every situation. You see, I feel like I need to intervene all the time and jump in and solve situations. But the fact is, uh, I, can't, I can't solve situations for folks, especially when, when it's internal in them. I had a mentor tell me one time years ago, and he said, J-Mo said, what, what the Holy Spirit and the Word of God can't fix, you can't either. You see, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God have all power to transform and to change. And we have to trust God by the Holy Spirit and by his word to handle things that we just cannot handle. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today, that he keeps you, may his face shine on you. Pray that God would give you an opportunity today to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. And if we recognize there's already been a seed that's been planted there, would God give us the discernment and the words that we might be able to cultivate that seed 
And God, by his grace, if he would allow us to witness him, save somebody today, that God would do that. I love you. I pray for you daily. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.